So Apple just released their most powerful computer to date, the M3 Ultra Mac Studio. And that's also gonna be their most powerful chipset. But what's confusing is that there's also an M4 Max Mac Studio that they released alongside of this one. So what gives? Which one's more powerful? Which one should you get? Let's answer that question. So when Apple did announce this yesterday, I was relatively confused as to what this M4 Max was versus the M3 Ultra, what the price points were gonna be, and which one was more powerful, because again, obviously in a normal naming scheme, M4 comes after M3, so when you think M4 Max and you ask the normal person, they'll think that the M4 Max is going to be the more capable computer, versus a computer that still has the M3 chip, which is technically older, but it is going to be their newest variant, their Ultra model. So we're gonna talk about each one and the differences that you get between them, and finally the use cases of each of these, but let's run down first the M4 Max Mac Studio from a price point and spec perspective. So the M4 Max Mac Studio does start at $19.99, and if you go through the education store, you do save $200, so keep that in mind, which brings it down to $17.99. What you get for that is going to be a 14-core CPU, a 32-core GPU, and then finally a 16-core neural engine, as well as 32 gigs of base unified memory and 512 gigs of internal storage, so this thing for $2,000 is going to be very beefy, very capable, and will be able to handle a lot of those normal day-to-day -day tasks and much more after that. You also get a great selection of ports. You get four Thunderbolt 5 ports on the rear, which is gonna be very impressive with more and more Thunderbolt 5 speed enabled devices coming out. I have a dock that I'm reviewing very soon, so definitely stay tuned for that one. You also get two USB-A ports, an HDMI port, a 10 gig ethernet port, as well as a headphone jack. And of course, on the front side, you also get that SD card reader. But now when it comes to maxing out that M4 Max computer, you can go up to 16 core CPU, which is gonna be Apple's fastest single core processor. Then you go to 40 core GPU, and then it does remain with that same 16 core neural engine. Now, funny enough, if you do go to the pricing calculator and go and spec out your Mac Studio, you can basically spec out each one of these under the same umbrella because once you start changing the different criteria that you want, so for instance, if you want to go to 60 core GPU and a 32 core neural engine, it'll automatically switch you to that M3 Ultra. But let's talk about that one in a second once we finish with this Mac Studio on the M4 Max side. And then for those of you wondering how many displays does this support, you can get up to four Pro Display XDR, so that's four 6K displays. So if you do have $20,000 worth of displays, your $2,000 Mac Studio will be able to support all four of those displays, which again, depending on your use cases, you'll be able to get done. And it can support up to five total displays depending on the resolution and the throughput. So that is going to be the M4 Max Mac Studio. But now let's go over to this M3 Ultra, and then the way that I want to contextualize what this M3 Ultra is, is imagine two M3 Max chips fused together into one, giving us the Ultra, and that is why this thing is much more powerful than the M4 Max. If we were to get an M4 Ultra, then it would be two M4 Max chips put together, just to give you a little bit of context as to what that means. So from a CPU perspective, you can go up to 32 cores, which is 24 performance cores, and then eight efficiency cores. You can get up to an 80 core GPU, which is gonna be twice the amount that the M4 Max is capable of supporting. And then you can double the neural engine cores to 32 compared to the 16 that you get on the M4 Max. Some other crazy numbers to take into consideration is that you can get up to 512 gigs of unified memory. That is half a terabyte, half a terabyte of not storage, but actual RAM built into this Mac Studio. To give you again some context, the baseline RAM that you get on something like the MacBook Air or even the M4 Mac Mini is going to be 16 gigs. So this is much, much more than that. You also get almost twice the memory bandwidth, going from 512 gigabytes per second to 800 gigabytes per second. So again, you can just do more in less time and be more efficient with this M3 Ultra. But then the other cherry on top on the M3 Ultra is that it can support up to eight 6K displays. So if you do have some crazy command center that you need to power with just one computer, the M3 Ultra will be capable of powering all eight of those displays. And then lastly, for those of you that are curious about this, the max spec that you can get is going to be $14,099. That doesn't include Final Cut Pro, but from a spec sheet standpoint, you are getting that M3 Ultra with the 32 core CPU, the 80 core GPU, the 32 core neural engine, you get 512 gigs of unified memory, 16 terabytes of RAM. And like I said, that equates to $14,100. But now, in terms of who these are for and who should get what, and who would get the M3 Max over the M4 Ultra depending on price point, this is where it starts to kind of nitpick a little bit because I'm somebody who uses a MacBook Air, who uses an iPad Pro. I'm kind of on, yes, I use it for work and things like that, but I'm not doing anything crazy. The most that I'm doing here is gonna be 4K60 video editing with a few layers, and it goes to show that an eight gigabyte iPad Pro can already handle that. So what are these use cases that people are doing that needs 512 gigs of unified memory, that needs 80 core GPUs in order to get this done. So let's walk through exactly what type of prospective buyer or customer each one of these is for. 
Now for every use case, this M3 Ultra will be better than the M4 Max, so it just comes down to a cost to performance ratio and what you're willing to spend because it's a $2,000 difference from the baseline model of these Mac Studios. So again, not everybody's gonna need a $4,000 machine to get what they need to get done. So for creative professionals, yes, both of these will be able to get it done, and they'll be extremely efficient on both of those ends. If you're a 4K and 8K video editor and you're working along those kinds of timelines, both of these will be able to do it with the M4 Max being great at being able to handle all that. But of course, the M3 Ultra will be that much better being able to take on up to 22 simultaneous 8K ProRes video streams. Again, 8K ProRes video streams is an abundance of data and a lot, a lot of throughput that can be put on a machine. So 22 streams of that all at once with the M3 Ultra is amazing. So now some of the use cases that I would fully recommend the M3 Ultra is going to be for AI and large language models because all that extra unified memory, all the extra cores, all the GPU power that's coming with it is gonna be extremely beneficial for running all these models long-term and of course in the short term. Now, can the M4 Max handle some of that? It can handle some of it to an extent, but again, it's gonna be limited by the GPU cores. And if you really wanna push something and you are in that upper echelon, then yeah, the M3 Ultra will be able to get that done for you. And then when it comes for 3D artists and game developers, if you're using something like the Unreal Engine or Blender, the M4 Max is gonna be more than enough. But if you're using something that has ultra heavy GPU loads, then yes, you're gonna have to go with the M3 Ultra or not have to go, but it'll be extremely beneficial from an efficiency and power standpoint going with the M3 Ultra. So if you're just an average user of a computer, but you still wanna get the Mac Studio, then yeah, go for the M4 Max because you're gonna be future-proofed for years. And I'm talking about almost a decade probably if you are just a normal everyday user. If you're a creative professional, that's something like me, right? Maybe you're using some 4K video streams. Maybe you are able to use something like Final Cut Pro and you wanna optimize for that. Then still, the M4 Max is gonna be more than enough if you're making thumbnails and using Photoshop and things like that. But if you are somebody that is creating AI models from scratch, you're using large language models, then maybe the M3 Ultra is something that you should consider because that's going to be the best for that type of workflow. Now, like I said earlier, those creative kind of tasks can be done by both the M4 Max and the M3 Ultra. It's just a matter of how fast you want to get from point A to point B. We will be getting these in the studio and testing some export speeds to see if it's going to be worth it for those people because if you can save half the time, then maybe it would be worth spending twice as much to save half that time. But it remains yet to be seen if exactly that's how the math plays out. But let me know in the comment down below what you think. Are you in the market for a computer like this? Is this overkill for most people? I, for one, am not the target customer of a Mac Studio. I know Jeff will be, so hopefully he gets his hands on one of those to really kind of walk through exactly what the use cases are for these computers. But I'm just curious to know who's in the market for something like this, and more specifically, what do you plan to do with it that maybe something like a MacBook Pro couldn't do or something, even a MacBook Air? Because a 16 gig RAM MacBook Air is more than enough for 97% of Apple users in my opinion. But that'll do it, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you wanna watch more videos like this one or learn a little bit more about the new M4 MacBook Air that came out, definitely check out one of these videos right here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because it continues to motivate us to make videos like this. But until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everybody.